Hello children, welcome back to e-learning class. This side she wins her and we are going to study today the topic, the sentence. In this video, we will discuss the sentences and their types along with subject and predicate. So let's begin. So children, let's start the sentence. But before that, uh, let me explain you phrase. What's a phrase? A phrase is a group of words that doesn't have a subject and predicate. It means it will be a group of words. There will be a collection of some words in a proper order, of course. But this collection will not have any subject or verb. For example, if we see my favorite poet is Rabindranath Tagore. Once upon a time, there lived a lion in this forest. The man with the big suitcase was looking suspicious. The man sat under a tree. In all these four sentences, children, the underlined group of words are phrases. Now let's try to understand what's a sentence. A sentence is a group of words that makes complete sense or a sentence is a group of words arranged in an order so that they make complete sense. Let's look at the following examples. I bought an umbrella yesterday. Umbrella and bought yesterday I. Which collection can be called a sentence? Of course, the first one. I bought an umbrella yesterday. In second one, have been free for two hours working. We have been working for two hours. Of course, here also, we have been working for two hours. In the third one, on my birthday, a precious gift got I. I got a precious gift on my birthday. This one can be called a sentence because the words are in a proper order. And in the fourth example, hurrah, we have won the match, is a correct example of a sentence. Whereas the second one, hurrah, the match have we won, cannot be called a sentence because the words are not in proper order. So children, we have seen here that every group of words cannot be called a sentence unless and until the words are arranged in a proper order and the group of words must have a subject and predicate to be called a sentence. Children keep in mind that every sentence must start with a capital letter and every sentence must end with a proper punctuation mark like a full stop, a question mark or an exclamation mark. Children, we have seen what is a phrase and what is a sentence. Now, let's discuss what is a clause. A clause is a group of words that has both a subject and a predicate. Clause is quite similar to sentence. Let's try to understand more about it. Types of clauses. Clauses can be divided into principal clause and subordinate clause. Principal clause can also be called main clause or independent clause. As it is very clear by the name itself, principal clause. The clause will not be dependent on any other clause and that is why principal clause can be called a sentence. But unlike principal clause or main clause, we cannot call subordinate clause to be a sentence because it is a subordinate. It is dependent on the principal clause. It has no existence of its own. However, it will have a subject and predicate, yet it will remain a subordinate clause and it requires another clause that is to say the principal clause to complete its sense. Let's try to understand through examples. He took an umbrella with him because it was raining. If we talk about he took an umbrella with him, it's a sentence, it's a clause as well. But what kind of clause it is? Let's decide whether it is principal clause or subordinate clause. He took an umbrella with him it's the principal clause because it doesn't require any other sentence to complete its
its sense it is complete in itself so that is why it is the main clause it is an independent clause now the second part because it was raining this part is subordinate clause why because it was raining it depends it requires a sentence it is based on another sentence it doesn't give us complete sense because it was raining don't you think it sounds uh, incomplete and that is why we call it dependent clause or subordinate clause now let's see the other example as soon as the thief saw the police he ran away so in this sentence we can see two sub sentences two parts are there one is as soon as the thief saw the police the next one is he ran away in this as soon as the thief saw the police is the subordinate clause he ran away is the principal clause because he ran away gives us a complete sense but can we start a sentence as soon as the thief saw the police then it sounds that we require some more thing about it more information about it and that is why this clause will be dependent clause or subordinate clause now let's study subject and predicate what is a subject the part of the sentence which names the person or thing we are speaking about is called the subject of the sentence and the part of the sentence which tells something about the subject is called the predicate of the sentence let's try to understand through examples the story book is very interesting what is the subject in the sentence the story book and what's the predicate is very interesting walking is good for health subject is walking predicate is is good for health the moon shines at night about what we are talking we are talking about the moon so the subject is the moon and what we are talking about the subject that is shines at night so shines at night the predicate in the same way the students are decorating their classroom who are decorating their classroom who are the doer of this work the students so the subject is the students and what is said about the students are decorating their classroom so this part is the predicate in this way children we can identify the subject and predicate of a sentence now let's see the classification of sentences on the basis of function sentences can be classified into five types assertive sentences interrogative sentences imperative sentences exclamatory sentences and optative sentences assertive sentence is also known as declarative and statements a sentence that states or declares something is called an assertive or declarative sentence an assertive sentence can be affirmative or negative for example honesty is the best policy they didn't participate in the contest now let's see what is an interrogative sentence a sentence that asks a question or makes an inquiry is called an interrogative sentence do you help your parents at home what do you like to read most take care children to end these sentences we must put question marks what is an imperative sentence a sentence which expresses a command a request or an advice is called an imperative sentence for example take off your shoes outside before you enter the lab don't touch the electric wires come here go there all these examples are of imperative sentences now let's see what's an exclamatory sentence an exclamatory sentence expresses a strong or sudden feeling of joy sorrow wonder or regret we are not already prepared for it we just blurt it out just we hear a news just we see a sight and we just speak it out for example alas i have lost the match what a nice fellow you are after seeing the taj mahal the tourist just out of surprise he just said 
in an amazement. What a wonderful piece of monument the Taj is. Children, don't forget to put a mark of interjection at the end of the sentence or at the end of the exclamatory word. Now let's see the fifth kind of sentences that is optative sentence. Optative sentences express a wish, desire, prayer, blessing or curse. They also end with a mark of interjection. For example, may you live long. May God bless you with good health. May your all dreams come true. Many happy returns of the day. Well, children, this is all about this topic, the sentence. I hope you must have understood a lot. Thank you.